Hello guys, Oscar Hotel 8, Sierra Tango November here from Survival Tech Nord. Lately, Whisper, the weak signal propagation reporter, has been gaining a lot of popularity in the ham radio community. Personally, and if you followed the channel for a while, you know that I use Whisper as a means of comparing different configurations, different antennas, different types of antennas to one another to see their effectiveness in my MAM portable uh, field operations. Well, today we're going to take a look at the mobile Whisper testing environment and set up the FT817ND, the ZLP Mini Pro SC, uh, and WSJTX on Ubuntu Linux. We're also going to take a look at some of the results and give you an idea of uh, how this type of environment can be useful for you. So, stick with me and let's get started. You are listening to the emergency broadcast systems. This station broadcasts emergency news and official information on the air. For so I already air. know I'm going to get some of the crazy feedback in the comments, and that's okay. So before we even get started, I want to point out the goal of this Whisper Test Kit. Its sole purpose is providing a comparison between the various types of antennas and antenna configurations that we use in our MAM portable operations. It's a research tool. We also understand that we can't directly compare our whisper results one-to-one -to, -one to other digital modes like PSK and so on. In this context, whisper is a research tool, nothing more, nothing less. From a WSJTX perspective, this video is relevant to both the ZLP Mini Pro SC and the Signalink USB audio interfaces. The very first thing we're going to do is connect the ZLP Mini Pro SC to the Yaesu FT817 or other radio's data port. Then we'll connect the USB port from the Mini Pro SC to a spare USB port on your laptop. Let's go ahead and do that. The Mini DIN port on the ZLP Mini Pro SC will go to the data port on your radio. The USB port on the Mini Pro SC will go to a spare USB port on your laptop, netbook, or tablet. There's often some confusion between the data port and the CAT port. While some modern radios have built-in USB, on the FT817, 857, 897, and other Yaesu radios, the data port is used for your audio interface. The CAT port is what we use to control the radio through software like FLDG or WSJTX. If you're going to use rig control through WSJTX and you have the correct cable for it, right now would be a good time to go ahead and plug it in. The FT817 has a couple of menu settings that we need to adjust so that everything works correctly. We're going to go ahead and power it up long press on the function button so that you can get into the menu settings. We're specifically looking for menus 14, 25, and 26. Menu 14 is the cat baud rate. Menu 25 is the digital mic gain for the data input output on the back of your rig. I've got mine set to 40, that works for me, but you may have to test to see what works for you. Menu 26 is the digital mode setting. I have mine set for user USB. Since most digital communications on amateur radio take place on upper sideband, using user U will automatically put the radio in upper sideband when you select digital as the mode on your radio. Now you can go back to the main menu and we'll continue with the setup. In my opinion, you can save yourself a lot of trouble by checking these ports beforehand. With your ZLP Mini Pro SC connected and powered on, as well as your CAT control cable if you're using one, go ahead and open a terminal port, then type Lima Sierra Uniform Sierra Bravo. If you've done that correctly, you'll be given a list of the devices connected to your laptop. My audio interface is on bus 3, device 14, and it's the PCM2912 audio codec. And depending on what type of interface you're using for your CAT control, you'll find that there as well. 
Now we can close this window and go to WSJTX. So we're going to start by opening up WSJTX, clicking File, and then Settings. When that opens, we're going to go to the Radio tab to set up Rig Control. These are exactly the settings as I use for my FT817ND and Mini Pro SC. What we care about is the serial port, the serial port baud rate, the push-to-talk method, uh, data or packet mode, and finally the test cat to make sure your settings are correct. Certainly now you understand why we do things in the order that we've done them. By setting up the FT817 and looking at the USB ports first, we already know the answers to the questions that are asked here in the settings. Once you've entered the settings, you can use the test cat button to make sure that WSJTX can communicate with your radio. Now we can move over to the audio tab. For the sound card input and output, we want to choose the correct port that we found in the terminal earlier. That was USB audio codec. I didn't have to change anything else on this screen and it all worked perfectly. There's one more important setting we want to look at before we go to the, back to the main screen. That you can find on the reporting tab. We're interested in the PSK reporter spotting found there in the network services. Enabling this feature will upload your spots, that's what you hear on Whisper, to PSK Reporter and the whispernet.org website. It will also allow you to prepare bi-directional reports for transmit and receive about your station configurations. Now we can move on to adjusting the ALC and audio levels via WSJTX. On the lower right side of the screen, you can see the transmit audio level adjustment. We'll use this slider to adjust the audio level out to the FT817, and of course, adjusting the audio will also adjust the power output. I find an ALC setting of no bars or just flashing one bar to be perfect for my configuration. So if you haven't grown tired of my babbling yet, we can go ahead and send and receive some beacons. On the left side of the screen, we have the transmit screen. You can see that there's a screen capture of it sending out a whisper beacon. On the lower right side of the screen, we have the receive screen. And you can see that I'm actually receiving whisper beacons from other operators around the world. Now, I've been running the WSJT app for the entire time that I've been editing this video. I put my Chameleon Hybrid Micro just outside the window in a sloping configuration from the tower. Connected it all up to my FT817 and WSJTX, and it's been running ever since. I did this to make the tutorial less abstract and more pragmatic. It's all pretty straightforward. When I'm transmitting, uh, WSJTX will automatically switch the radio back to receive mode and start receiving whisper beacons, decoding them, and then adding them to the list. Now, because we enabled the PSK reporter integration in settings, we can actually go to whispernet.org now and see who's heard us and who we've heard. So let's open a browser and go to www.whispernet.org. Click on the map link and when that opens, scroll down and adjust the settings to get just the information that you want. For me, that's my call sign on 40 meters during the last uh, 24 hours. Then you go ahead and click update and the map will refresh and give you just the information you asked for. Now by itself, this map looks pretty cool, but it's deceptive. So yes, it shows all the stations that I've interacted with, either received or who have received me. 
And on the surface, that looks okay, but let's go ahead and click my call sign to see the stations that I've heard and the stations that have heard me. Let's take screenshots of both screens with and without the reception and transmission reports so we can create a nice map from them in Photoshop. Now let's scroll over and click database to get the raw information about your reception and transmission reports. Now just like with the map screen, we can go into the settings, edit the settings to get the information that we want in the order that we want it displayed. When you're happy with the settings, go ahead and click update. A list of the stations that have heard you, basically their reception reports of your beacon, will be displayed for you. You can also go back to the settings and invert this so that uh, only stations you've heard, so basically your reception reports for other stations, will be displayed for you. Finally, we can take those screenshots we took of the map and the database screens, put them in your favorite image editing app and you get something that uh, resembles something like this. And there you go. That's about everything you need to get started in a nutshell. I've left you with a few related videos. Have a look at those if you haven't watched them already. And remember this guys, if you think I deserve it, please consider leaving a comment, a thumbs up and sharing this video with someone who you think might enjoy it. That's the best way to motivate me to keep making these videos. Alright guys, rock and roll. Ciao.